Uh, a 30 year old male mr x from west bengal presented with headache for past one month and giddiness for past last 15 days this year presenting in us uh, he was apparently normal one month before after that he developed a severe headache which was more on frontal associated with vomiting with evening rise of temperature no history suggestive of any focal neurological deficits uh, he was uh, initially evaluated outside and was diagnosed as probable tubercular meningitis and was started on anti tubercular therapy following that he developed giddiness uh, associated with room spinning and postural variation so first was he was done, outside he was done the csf analysis which shows high protein with low sugar and with lymphocytic predominant based on that uh, csf not detected on mtp so based on that he was probable tubercular meningitis started on att and after that uh, he developed some acute hepatitis so he was changed into uh, rifampicin ethambutol linisolid and injection septomycin Uh, for that above comes he came to cmc for further management uh, here that vitals was a pulse rate of 80 with blood pressure uh, and other vitals was normal uh, with no pela rectus sinusis and clubbing of lymphadenopathy and central nervous system examination no coronary nerve abnormality seen and motor examination was normal sensory system also was normal but in cerebellar examination he had left side ataxia with finger nose test and heel knee test on left side was positive and rambach center was positive with tandem walk positive and gait was swaying to more on the left side and uh, other meningeal signs spinal skull was normal and other system examination also within normal limits so a 30 year old mr x probable tubercular meningitis on att presented with new onset giddiness associated with room spinning and postural variation on examination there were no motor deficits but cerebellar signs were positive what are the references you would consider so initially we considered was it's a paradoxical worsening of tuberculosis maybe or tubercular endarteritis with cerebellar infarctions or tubercular endarteritis with brain stem ischemia or tubercular arachnoiditis or drug induced vestibular toxicity so the initial evaluation shows uh, hba of 13.9 with total count and difference count which was normal and lft and renal function was also within normal limits so we done for fundoscopy which shows mild blurring of margins so we we done for guarded csf it shows a wbc of 10 uh, with uh, uh, lymphocytes predominant and hypoglucose was low and protein was marginally elevated so it's responded to att we consider but expert was a negative so we further plan for mri brain power to rule out any cerebellar or uh, tubercular endarteritis there so mri brain showed no meningitis or granuloma or no significant intracranial abnormality so but he had rambach sign was positive so any posterior column lesion is there or not we have done for mri spine also mri spine also showed no meningeal enhancement or visceral all successful normal limit and emg for to rule out posterior column lesion only it also normal so the another possibility was uh, he was previously started on streptomycin so we want to rule out any peripheral ataxia causes so we done for pure tone odontometry and tympanometry but it was normal so cochlear function was within normal limits so further we want to rule out uh, vestibular now damage so we went for uh, electron stomography it showed uh, all caloric caloric test was hypo responsive so we consider probably due to vestibular only patient have giddiness so our final diagnosis was probable tubercular meningitis with streptomycin induced bilateral vestibular toxicity so in this occasion i want to know i want to some, tell about the uh, amnoglycosis causes which toxicity more and mechanism of amnoglycosis toxicities is it reversible or what are all the vestibular function tests we can do in bedside or uh, laboratory and the management for our patient so this is a european review for medical and pharmacological science released 2020 showed uh, amikacin neomycin carnamycin more on cochlear toxicity streptomycin tetra gentamicin cisomycin will cause most on uh, vestibular toxicity tobramycin will cause both vestibular and cochlear toxicity so it is a clinical uh, evaluation early diagnosis of tobramycin otosakti this was journal was uh, published on negm on 2011 so it is a cohort study done from 1996 to 2007 17 where uh, 418 were enrolled patients were enrolled uh, mainly the streptomycin injection where they given was uh, minimum of 14 days to maximum of 180 days so the outcome mainly assessed was a uh, uh, 
how much incidence of vestibular toxicity. So it shows the 4.2 percent, around 18, 17 percent were developed vestibular toxicity, and they also assessed um, vestibular ocular reflex gain. So based on the test, they initially assess the outcome. Uh, so is if the test have low gain, so the patients will get more toxicity. So and the duration has more and vestibular less in uh, vestibular toxicity compared to the uh, cochlear toxicity. So, if the vestibular ocular reflex gain was low, uh, we can prevent the patient to take streptomycin. So, we'll reduce the vestibular toxicity. So, the mechanism of vestibular toxicity mainly due to the damage in the crista ampullaris. So, the crista ampullaris contains the hair cells. So, the system will get administered aminoglycosides acids uh, will enter through the supporting cells of the transition cells and dark cells. But how these uh, drugs enter into the inner ear uh, to trespass the blood rabbit and prior ear, we do not know till now. And the vestibular toxicity is not only dose dependent also. So in low doses also, patient will get a vestibular toxicity mainly due to the mutations in the tolerless RNA of mitochondria. So the main mutations of A155G and c 14 mutations are gain of function mutations. Uh, it will cost more effect to um, affection to the tolerless RNA. So it will increase the toxicity. And the main functions of the vestibule are uh, uh, three reflexes to maintain our stance, gaze, and the head position. Though are uh, vestibular ocular reflex, mainly maintain clear vision and head down motion. So vestibular spinal reflex helps to stabilize the body and posture. Vestibular colic reflex stabilizes the head in space during body motion. So these three reflex are affected in our patient. In my patient, vestibular ocular reflex, uh, patient have acylopsia. Acylopsia means whenever the head motions occur, patient have uh, diplopia or di difficulty in seeing. Person. So vestibular signing means patient had ataxia. And vestibular colic reflex, uh, patient uh, is only complaining head nodding is present. <laughs> so what are the vestibular function? It is a dizziness handicap inventory. It is a bedside assessment score we can use. So based on this patient, how dependent on others or how he do day-to-day -day daily activities. It is a more of 25 questions, present as a yes, sometimes no, scored as 0 to 4. The minimum score was 0 and maximum score of 100. Uh, this is the vestibular function test we can do. Uh, so I'm not going to detail this. Mainly I am focused on electron stagmography. So the this test will test the functions of uh, ocular motor system, lateral semicircular canal with superior vestibular nerve, and the eye movements during positional change and following the nystagmus also. So this electron nystagmography contains spontaneous, it measures spontaneous eye movements, positional and positioning changing, means optogenetic test and the caloric testing. In the caloric test, uh, in the ENG, only the caloric test will evaluate each year separately. So in this test, we can give non-physiologic thermos of cold or hot water. So it will stimulate the flow of the endolymph, endolymph in the lateral semicircular canals. So we will irrigate each year separately with uh, and warm and cold water independently. So mainly, first we need to present the patient with supine head state and elevate up to 30 degree and the patient with eye was closed. So before that, we need to check ear canal and Tiffany one. If ear canal have wax, or tympanic member perforation, we cannot do this test. After that, we need to place the electrodes, four electrodes we need to place, uh, outer canthe, inner canthe, and superorbital ridge, infraorbital ridge. So warm and cold water we are using. It will measure three uh, measurements. One is slow component eye velocity and the unilateral weakness. Unilateral weakness measured on the junkie formula. So if the percentage difference between more than 20%, it will predominantly in the unilateral weakness. It also assesses the direct line production of the predominance of the nystagmus. So left side is a nystagmus predominant or right side. Uh, the difference is more than 30 percent will tell that which side is the predominance is there. So this is the ENG of our patient. Uh, this is this is the butterfly graph and this is the frequency of nystagmus in the 30 seconds. of. Um, so in our patient it's mostly so below to the uh, shaded area. So it is a hypoactive in all four color tests. So what are we going to treat mainly in the vestibular rehabilitation therapy? It mainly focuses on reduce your risk of falling, improve your balance, 
and reduce your dizziness symptoms and improve your ability to stabilize your vision and increase your body strength. Nay, learning points was a cast of attacks of vertigo and electrospin therapy. Thank you. So, is it reversible? No. So, what, what has happened to him now? He's, he's able to manage. Yes, sir, we are giving candidates to physiotherapy with occupational therapy. So, we also advised him it will improve very slowly, but so already reversal damage acute. You need to modify your lifestyles. Any questions? Uh, Ma'am, it's mainly due to the uh, posture is mentioning we, uh, if the uh, patient had vestibular toxicity, the posture is maintained by only with uh, uh, vision and uh, vision and a reticular activating system. Whenever patient close, it uh, lasts through the vision. So that time patient had a rhombus. Probably won't worry rhombus. The the in the so you think the and the cerebral are yes. uh, second question you mentioned posture symptoms no? was there a component of orthopedic hypertension or something like that no no posture hypertension that uh, i head position changing i mentioned also. third question what is the ADD regimen you use for patient now i'm using we are using the intensive phase only one hrzt only hrzt yes ma'am yes, ma Yes, no. Okay, thank you. Um, so the best presentation, I would probably give it to Dr. Abisha from Medicine 3.